Hi everybody, Rob here again from Power Learning Solutions with some more paper writing tips. And this video has been inspired by a group of uh, students of mine from a grad course who are working on a capstone research project and asked me recently how to get started with tackling the data analysis chapter of their research report. Now you might not be writing a full report, you might be writing this as a paper, but they're still generally structured the same way. Either it is a section that presents your data or an entire chapter dedicated to your data analysis. Well, to get started, you have to pull the data from whatever sources you want. I'm gonna use an example of uh, a paper that I co-wrote with a colleague of mine. Uh, the data that uh, you're gonna see on the screen are gonna be blanked out just to make sure that we don't have any violations of our data sharing um, stipulations from our research ethics protocols. And uh, you're gonna pull that data and you're gonna do whatever analyses that you need on it. Uh, generally, if you've got it in Excel, you can do a lot of calculations in there. Maybe you're gonna use SPSS for uh, statistical analysis or NVivo or something like that for some of your qualitative data analysis. We're not gonna look at any actual data analysis in this video that would require uh, a look at um, you know, a lot of uh, statistics. You could do whole courses on that, whole degrees on that. We're not gonna look at it that uh, in this video. We're just gonna look at how to take that data and how to start writing your chapter once you have uh, gotten your data and you've made the calculations that you need to or organize things in the way that you need to. So I'm going to open up uh, version zero of my sample paper here now. I have already drafted uh, my uh, introductory chapter. I've drafted my literature review. Now this is an abbreviated uh, version from an old draft of a paper a colleague of mine were working on. Uh, but my literature review is all done here. I've got uh, an abbreviated version of uh, our methodologies that we used here. That would be chapter three. So the data analysis has been done. We're ready to write chapter four. What you want to do to get started here is go back to look at the questions that you asked in your research proposal and look at the questions that you actually asked on your data analysis instruments. If it was a survey, you probably got a bunch of different questions there. And you could start populating your blank chapter with some headings and leave some placeholders here. So I wanted to present some information about the organizational context of these two universities and how they responded to, uh, to the change to online teaching during COVID-19. So we've got Cape Breton University and Ontario Tech University. Uh, so I wanted to present some organizational context. I collected some data on that. Uh, I've got demographic data that I want to present about the respondents to the survey to, to uh, better understand who was making that transition to online teaching before we start analyzing how it impacted them. Uh, I wanted to uh, get some data from them in the survey on what digital tools they actually used, what supports that they actually used, um, the impacts on their teaching practice and impacts on teaching uh, that they foresee when they come back to the classroom. So those are the types of questions I asked in the survey. So I'm gonna put those placeholders in here and I'm gonna go back to my data. You can easily organize your data based on all kinds of different criteria. So uh, I leave my raw data alone on one sheet. I Generally, I make a copy of it to another sheet in the, in the uh, spreadsheet before I start analyzing it. So I can always go back to the raw data if I really mess up my, uh, my uh, calculations. I've organized the data based on the university. I've organized the data based on uh, different demographics. I've uh, pulled some data from, uh, from some of these, such as um, the types of tools that they talked about using in their responses ones that they felt that they were comfortable using, ones that they felt that they were not comfortable using, things like that that I wanted to present some data on. Once you have that uh, all organized, you've got your calculations done. Here's another uh, sheet showing some different calculations that I have done here with uh, their years of experience, different demographic data, things like that. So lots of different ways that you can analyze this data and organize it. 
get it ready to put into your paper. You can even take some of this data and make some charts and tables, figures, things like that. You're going to start putting it into your paper before you write anything in your chapter. Now that I've got my data ready to go here, uh, and I'm ready to put it into my chapter, into the different uh, sections where I have placeholders, I'm going to just make some tables, copy paste the, them in, make sure that they're properly formatted for APA standards, if that's what you're using to write your paper with your headings and all of that. I'm just putting the data in the paper, not typing anything up at this point, just putting it in, in the order that I want to present it in. You'll notice here I've also pulled some uh, some quotes, some good quotes that I want to use that talk about those particular questions uh, from the open response question section of, of my survey. So I've got my good quotes here. I've got my tables, my charts, my figures, all of that's ready. And I put some notes in here for myself to add context around uh, different things when you're introducing uh, these tables. The last thing that uh, you need to do once you've got all of this in is to actually do your writing for your chapter. So I've got another version of the paper here where I've started writing some stuff around it. So if you look at the demographic data subsection that I had, here's uh, that table that presents the demographic data. I just write a little paragraph that, that explains what's in the table and presents the key point that you want the table to show. Uh, add a little bit more context here and introduce the next table of data. I'm not in this chapter getting into any al analysis. I'm not getting into uh, any insights into what all of this data actually means. I'm simply presenting the results. Once you've got all of these chapter, uh, all of these questions answered, all of your tables in, all of the context provided around, all of the charts, tables, and figures, and all of this information, now is your time to go and discuss that and analyze that. That's where you get into writing chapter five, uh, the discussion chapter. This chapter is where you take everything that you presented in chapter four and you discuss what it means in the context of the themes that you presented in your literature review chapter. After you have discussed all of the implications of, of this, you present the limitations of your study and you uh, make your conclusions and your recommendations before wrapping up your paper.